What's up, guys? We are here in, uh, I believe, episode four of uh, Weekly Devo Series 2. And um, I want to first start off by apologizing for not posting one last week. Um, I just, I was working all week uh, or all weekend and uh, I didn't want to rush um, an episode. I didn't want to just come in and and shoot it all out and just um, try to force it or something. Um, I really wanted to take the time to dig deep and make sure that um, what I'm producing is good and, and biblical and uh and that there's just a lot of truth behind it. So um, I decided to not post anything uh, last week and uh, just wait a week before we dove into uh, another episode of this week. So I hope you guys had a, a good week off um, from the week from the uh, episode and um, that last week's episode was super encouraging to you. I actually got a lot of emails from people um, <clears throat> that said it was super encouraging. So that was that was uh, good to hear that uh, the Lord used it. So um, let's uh, let's pray and then we'll we'll get into the text. God, thank you so much um, just for your love and your grace, and uh, God, just for bringing us together again in a in a week to to learn more about you and to to just praise your name, Lord. It is a, a blessing that we get to interact in this way and that we get to be here together. Lord, we pray this in your name. Amen. You know what? Let's let's talk about um, what this is about first. <clears throat> um, what is happening is uh, we're going to read. Uh, we're in the book of Acts, and we're going to be actually talking about Saul at this point, who is later going to become Paul. And those of you that don't know, Paul wrote the thirteen wrote thirteen books in the Bible, um, all in the New Testament. Um, and uh, so he was a very um, strong uh, disciple for the Lord. Um, that is uh, obviously had a huge impact 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 on uh, Scripture and. Um, and God entrusted him with a lot. So um, right now we are about to get into what um, what he was before, which was before he actually converted and, and became a believer, he was actually murdering Christians. And uh, and at this point, um, he had been like searching for Christians and, and killing them and stoning them and doing all this stuff. And now we're at the place where he's about to be saved. So uh, chapter 9 of Acts, verses 1 uh, through 9. Here we go. But Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogue at Damascus, so that if he found any belonging to the way, the way at the time was Christianity. So right after Jesus uh, was resurrected, they then called Christianity the way. Um, Jewish Christians were, that, were called that at that time. And uh, any belonging to the way, men or women, he might bring them to Jerusalem. Now, as he went on his way, he approached Damascus, and suddenly a light from heaven shone around him, and falling to the ground, he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But rise and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless, hearing the voice, but seeing no one. Saul rose from the ground, and although his eyes were opened, he saw nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him to Damascus. And for three days he was without sight and neither ate nor drank. Um, so when it says, just FYI, before um, we dive into what I really want to talk about, it says... Um, when he rose from the ground, his eyes were open but saw nothing. Essentially what it's saying is his eyes were open to Jesus. His eyes saw who Jesus was and, and what his grace truly is. Um, and literally when it says he saw nothing, he was blind for three days until later on he then is is healed by a, a fellow disciple. But what's what I think is so interesting about this text, and this is why I chose this text to read, if you if you focus, it says, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And Saul replies, Who are you, Lord? And mind you, Saul was killing Christians because they were belonging to the way, because they called Jesus Lord. Yet when he sees Jesus, what does he call him? Lord. And in the Greek, it means essentially uh, like sir or um, or uh, just a respectful way of of 
calling someone that you respect by name. Um, and what I think is insane is that he refers to him as Lord. Um, because Saul was a man who didn't believe anything of Christianity and thought that God and, and, and everything that was involved with Jesus was a complete false prophecy, a complete false truth that meant nothing. Yet when he sees Jesus, he calls him Lord because he saw him. And, and, and for us, we, I feel like we don't, we're not seeing those kind of encounters these days. So um, the Christian faith is almost in, in a time of, of fault, as some would say. But this is the thing. Jesus left us with the Holy Spirit to see anything and everything he calls us to see. And also, Romans 1 says that his, his invisible attributes are seen in all of creation. And, and, and if we, Christians, are to have the Holy Spirit living inside of us, we are showing Jesus in our daily life. So, so if somebody is persecuting Christians, it shouldn't just take this. It should take us showing Jesus. So, so let this be a challenge to you that we shouldn't only just be waiting for Jesus to like shine a cloud on someone. We should be stepping up as Christians. Like I remember doing a Bible study a, a while back with some brothers, and uh, and in the study it said, "Where are you, men? Where are you, men, to, to show Jesus, like to, to others, to show Jesus to people at work, to show Jesus to people that you don't even know? We can't be afraid of showing Jesus because we're afraid of what what people will think or what people will say. It's about how strong we believe in this truth." that pushes us to show Jesus in the way that Jesus showed himself to Saul. Because we see that after Jesus showed himself to Saul, he then wrote 13 books later on. <laughs> he became Paul, he was persecuted for his faith, and he led so many others to faith. Timothy was it was his protege, and, and then Timothy wrote two books as well. And like, Paul is, uh, for me, Paul is a man that I can't wait to meet in heaven and sit and chat with him. I personally believe him and I will sit down for coffee and it'll be wonderful and the coffee will be the most amazing coffee I ever had in my life because it'll be in heaven. Um, but that, I, just, I, I just want us to realize that after Paul saw Jesus, his life was changed miraculously. And if we show Jesus to others, we have that same opportunity. And I wanna thank you guys for watching. Um, I'm, I just wanna promote something a little bit. If you see this little X right here on my hat, um, it is for the End It Movement, and uh, it is a great organization that is shining a light on slavery. Um, there's 27 million slaves on this planet right now, and it's the most we've ever had in history um, through sex trafficking. And uh, if you donate to this cause, um, or you can even buy one of these hats, um, they also have shirts and other things. Um, all the proceeds go towards human trafficking and saving people in those um, environments. Um, so, uh, yeah, enditmovement.com um, and, uh, and donate to them. Again, if you guys ever need any help um, or you want some advice um, or you want to ask questions, don't be afraid to send me an email. Um, I would love to, to chat with you and, and see how I can help in the best way possible. I thank you guys for tuning in again, and uh, I'll uh, hopefully see you guys next week.